Hello everyone, I'm Sebastian Y. Welcome to Econometrics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the t-test on a regression parameter in Stata. I've got the wage2 dataset loaded up again. We're going to run a regression of wage on education, experience, and birth order. The first step of a t-test is to start with a null hypothesis. Our hypothesis today is going to be that one year of education will lead to an increase of wage of $85. Now we need to calculate the t-stat. To calculate the t-stat, we need to take our estimated coefficient, that's 73 right here, minus our hypothesized value of 85, and then divide by the standard error, which is right here. We're going to use the stored values from this regression to get that done. First, we will pull our education estimated coefficient with underscore b of education, subtract our null value of 85. Remember, if your null is negative, then it's going to be minus and minus, which is a plus here. And then divide by the standard error. And for that, we're going to use underscore se and then education. That's going to give us our t-stat of negative 1.728. Just in case we need this later, I'm going to also go ahead and save this as a scalar. And you can call a scalar anything you want, I'll just call it t-stat. The next thing to think about is our significance level. The most common ones are 10%, 5%, or 1%, and we often also state these as a confidence level, which would be 90, 95, or 99%. Whichever one you pick, the next thing to do is to calculate the critical value for that significance level. Let's go with the 10% significance level for now. To calculate critical values, we need to use the quantile function for the t distribution. In Stata, that is inverse t tail. Next, we need to put in our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is n minus k minus 1. That is the sample size minus the number of variables in your equation minus 1. If we take a quick look at our regression output here, you can see that n is 852. We have three variables and then minus one more for the constant. So 852 minus 4 is 848. You can also see in the regression output that number is going to show up right here. So we're going to put in 848. And then next we need to put in our significance level, but since we are going to do a two-tailed test, the total amount of probability will be in both tails, and since the inverse t-tail is one-tailed, we need to divide our significance level by two. So if we are using a significance level of 10% or 0.1, we need to divide that by two. And you can just put that in, or you can just put 0.05 if you want as well. That's going to give us our critical value of about 1.647. Now we compare the absolute value of our t-statistic with the critical value. Since the absolute value of our t-statistic, 1.7, exceeds the critical value of 1.6, we are going to reject the null hypothesis in this case. If our significance level had been 5%, we could go in and calculate that. 5% divided by 2 is 2.5%, and we would get a critical value of 1.96, in this case, we would fail to reject because 1.72 is less than that. Another way to look at this is with the p-value. To calculate the p-value, we are going to need the cumulative distribution function for the t-distribution, which in Stata is t-tail. As with the quantile function, we're going to need to put in our degrees of freedom, which is still 848. And then we put in our t-statistic, which is the negative 1.72. So a couple things to remember here. First of all, we saved that as t-stat, so I can just put in t-stat. You can put in whatever you named the scalar. But the other thing we need to think about is that t-tail needs a positive number for the t-stat. And so we're going to take the absolute value of our t-stat since ours is negative. The last thing we need to do here is to multiply this by 2 because we are doing a two-tailed test. This is going to give us our p-value of 0 0.084. The way that we use this is we compare that with the significance level. The p-value tells us the strongest significance level that we could reject the null at. That would be 8.4% significance. 
Since that is lower than 10%, we can reject the null at the 10% level, but since it's higher than 5%, we fail to reject at the 5% level. That's the same result we got from comparing the t-stat to the critical value, and these will always give you the same answer. Another way to approach this is with the confidence interval. If we go back up to our regression output, by default, it always gives us the 95% confidence interval, although you can change that. For education, you can see that the 95% confidence interval goes from about 60 to 86. Since that includes our null value of 85, we fail to reject at the 5% level. That's 1 minus 95%. We could also run this regression again, but I'm going to add the option level and put 90 to get our 90% confidence interval. And you can see that that does not include our null value of 85, so we would reject at the 10% level. The way that the confidence interval is calculated is that we take our coefficient estimate, so we'll take B of education, minus our standard error, times the critical value. So we're going to take the critical value from our 10% significance level, that's inverse t-tail with 0.05, paste that in, that will give us the lower bound of our confidence interval. You can see that that lines up right here. To get the upper bound of our confidence interval, we would add instead of subtract. You can see that that lines up with this number right here. I also want to point out that in the regression output, Stata gives us a t-statistic and a p-value. That is specifically for the test for statistical significance. So let's take a look at birth order right here. You can see that the t-stat is negative 2.42. If we were to take our coefficient for birth order and divide by the standard error for that same variable, you can see that we get that exact same t-stat. Remember to calculate the t-stat on the top of the fraction. We subtract off the null, but for statistical significance, the null is zero. And that p-value corresponds with that same test. So here we can see that birth order is statistically significant at the 5% level, but not the 1% level, since the p-value is in between those two numbers. Looking at the confidence intervals here, you can see that it's statistically significant at the 10% level because this confidence interval right here does not include zero. Going back up to our other one, we can see that the 95% confidence interval also does not include zero, so statistically significant there too. The last thing I'm going to show you is the test command in Stata. This will run the whole hypothesis test for you using the last regression that you ran. For example, test education equals 85. Remember, this is not saying that education is 85. It's saying that the null is that the coefficient next to education is 85. And you can see that we get a p-value identical to the one we calculated earlier. We also get an F statistic. The F test is another kind of hypothesis test that we can do, and we'll do that later. But in this type of test, the F statistic will be the square of the T statistic. So if we take our T statistic, which you remember I saved as a scalar, as T stat, and square that, you can see that we do in fact get 2.99, which matches up with the F stat right here. If we want to do our statistical significance test for birth order, we can do that too. We set that equal to zero, and we get that same p-value of 0 0.0155. Matches up right here. It's just rounded. And that is the basics of doing a t-test on a regression parameter in Stata. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.